Good morning, Americans. This is your favorite alien here on the afternoon of Thursday, August 3rd, 2023. And stand by for a special heartfelt commentary. Well, Americans, here I am sitting next to my television, turned it off at the moment to do this commentary. And here we go again with the third indictment of a former president of the United States in four months. We still got one more to go, but this is the federal indictment for the January 6th, as you called it, insurrection where he wanted to change the outcome of the election, either through violence or coup. So they say. Remember, it's alleged because the trial hasn't started or any decision has been made. He's been in or will be indicted at 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And it's the third time he's going to go through this process. He's had a state, a federal, and a federal charge as sitting president. Because remember, January 6th happened when he was the sitting president. So the other two indictments are for things that happened before he was president. Stony, Stormy Daniels before he became president and the Mori Largo disaster after he left office. But this is during the twilight of his administration, so he's still a sitting president. What does this say about your democracy? One, it emphasizes your disintegration as a nation. To actually do this is a disintegration as a nation. It means that your democracy doesn't work anymore. Because you could have stopped it in January 6th. You could have stopped him doing that uh, January 6th speech because he is an outgoing president. And you could say you're a lame duck president. You are not allowed to do anything presidential from the time of November to the time of inauguration in January. Remember, in the old days, it was March 4th. And look what happened to James Buchanan in 1861, he didn't lose the election, but he was the outgoing president, stuck with a civil war problem that he didn't want, didn't want to handle, and wanted to just go home. Okay? So what he did is basically what a president should have done. And you guys always are uh, griping at James Buchanan because in November he should have done something all the way to March 4th. Really? What could he do? Because between November and March, your states succeeded from the Union. Do you understand me, Americans? This is what you have here, a disintegration of states. Same as you did on that fateful November day in 1861 when, or 1860, when Abraham Lincoln became president, elect. And then you had that long wait from November to March 4th, 1861. James Buchanan had the reins of power. But he was an outgoing president. And this is why 
Franklin Delano Roosevelt changed the rules to January 20th and took some days off. Some countries don't even give you that. They give you about 30 days. And then your outgoing president is gone. You guys decided that you have what you called a transition of power. Transition team gets set up to run the country between the day after the election and up until 12 noon on January 20th. That's according to your new constitution set up in 1936. Okay? Do you understand me, Americans? But you didn't follow that with Donald J. Trump. He didn't want to set up a transition power. He refused to do it. So there was actually no transition between his election uh, defeat and January 20th, 2021. Yet he was acting as president when he was just a caretaker, outgoing caretaker, in fact. This is something that you Republicans have to look at. It happened to the Democrats under James Buchanan in 1861. It's happening to you. And look what he did. James Buchanan could do nothing in 1861. You can tell me what could he do. And you're saying, oh, he was pro-Southerner. Well, maybe he was. But he didn't outright come up and say, I just got stole the election. Uh, Abraham Lincoln should not have won. It should have been the Democratic uh, Stephen A. Douglas. Should have been the President of the United States. You didn't see that in 1861 or 1860, did you? No. Therefore, James Buchanan was really on a rock in a hard place. And this is what uh, Mr. Mike Pence is trying to tell you, stupid Republicans. The Constitution comes before anything else or party. And this is exactly what Mike Pence is trying to tell you. Constitutionally, whether he lost the election, whether it was stolen from him, whatever the reason, he should have taken a page from... Grover Cleveland's 1892 election. Did the Republicans steal the election under Benjamin Harrison? Oh, yes, they did. Oh, you betcha. In 1889, pardon me, the 1888 election. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't tell me otherwise. The Republicans stole that election in 1888. And when March 4th, of 1889 came around all that you saw Grover Cleveland was saying please keep the seat warm for me I'll be back in four years and he had a rematch with Benjamin Harrison in the 1892 and crushed him big time in 1892 unfortunately for Grover Cleveland even though he was a non-consecutive president the second term is always worse than the first, and he got disastrous second term. So by the time he left in 1897, poor Mr. Grover Cleveland. Uh, yeah, you see what I mean? Sometimes you dare not touch a second administration because it definitely comes back to bite you in a dare year. But that's what the tact that... Uh, the Trump administration should have done. They should have said, please keep the seat warm here, Biden. You do your administration and we'll get you back in four years because your administration is going to be disastrous. And hasn't it been disastrous under the Biden administration? His 41% approval rating. 
and less than that on the economy, and the economy is doing better than it was when he took over because of the COVID situation. Yet, the American people are saying, uh, we don't understand this guy. You see what I mean? But they'll vote for him because the opposition is Donald J. Trump, and we want the lesser of the two evils. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see, Donald J. Trump, you should have taken a book from the Democrats and taken the Grover Cleveland example of 1888. Please keep the seat warm for me. I'll be back in four years. And all you had to do is keep your tongue or your mouth shut. Yoo-hoo! And weather the next four years and watch uh, Mr. Biden like his administration has floundered because he had good ideas, wrong way of doing them. One of the good ideas he had, and this is what you got to look at Republicans, was, oh, uh, we're going to eliminate uh, fossil fuels because it's had its run its time. And yes, they have ran their time. Fossil fuels were only supposed to be a temporary measure. Not a century and a half old disaster that you guys have in your thing here. The only problem was that neither administration, whether Republican or Democrat, since eight, since 1950, have uh, set up, what are we going to use to supersede fossil fuels? How are we going to do this? We're going to have to set a sunset eventually for fossil fuels. And we're going to have to make sure that at the end of that sunset, we have something to take over its place. Well, Joseph Biden didn't have a source to take over fossil fuels, and he changed it in 2021. Therefore, you got a disastrous energy policy going on. Same with Afghanistan. You know that that war, eventually you had to get out of there, just like Vietnam. Nixon, at least in Vietnam, had this agreement and he knew that the Vietnamese may not have abided by the agreement, which they did for two years, and then they took it over in April of 1975. Thus, everything that you Democrats started under the Kennedy administration and the Johnson administration, domino effect, and what happened? The domino effect, didn't it? Yeah. Indochina became a disaster. Cambodia went to Pol Pot. Laos is a disaster. The Papat Lao and Laos is still a disaster today. Cambodia is a disaster. Vietnam is communist. And Thailand is in the middle of a rock and a hard place. Burma, oh well, yoo-hoo, or Myanmar, as you call it today. See what I mean, Americans? This is what the problem that you got, and it's leading to your disintegration. Instead of taking a cue from Grover Cleveland, the Trump administration decided to take a cue from James Buchanan. Thus, you're looking at disintegration no matter what happens with this and the uh, indictment in Georgia coming up, you're still looking at a national disintegr disintegration because you've got two polarized points of view that are both crazy. And they're not American. They don't even look for the American way of doing things. Number one, bring you, brink from, bring you back from the brink of disintegration. And number two, change the documents that you have for the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, and following centuries. Thus, you got a problem. Speaking from the heart, this is your favorite alien. I know I'm not sitting in here for Paul Harvey, but if he were alive today, he would put his stamp of approval on this commentary. Good day.